now we're going to be looking at threats to data information and systems so first we have malware what is malware it simply means malicious software this can be a combination of anything so anything viruses worms trojan viruses spyware adware ransomware any one of those things okay now i don't think you guys need to know much more than let's say viruses and maybe spyware or ransomware you, you need to know a couple of them so malware again is software designed to cause harm to your it system it can steal your data delete your data trap your data and hold it so this is where ransomware comes in and it's in the name again ransomware they it's software used or created to hold your data at ransom and you normally only get the data back once you've paid a ransom in many cases it's not true you pay the ransom and they keep asking for more money more money more money because it might be very valuable data uh, adware um, you see those ads pop up on your screen that's what adware is so you click on a website randomly or you, or you, or you have this program on your computer that keeps popping ads up spyware it, again it's in the name it spies on what you're doing and the most common version of this is let's say uh, keylogger where every time you type something it saves that information and sends it to someone else so let's say you you're on the halifax website trying to sign into your bank account and everything you type in is saved and sent to someone else or no they actually have the details to log into your bank account if anyone here did um, history before you might know what a trojan horse is just from that so uh, it was gifted to people and then soldiers would crawl out of it in, in the night to cause havoc. The Trojan horse is more or less the same thing. You download something that seems legitimate. So let's say you went to a website, you downloaded Microsoft Office or Google Chrome, and you think that's what you've downloaded. Now, once you click on it to install it, or once you've opened the program you've installed, it starts doing stuff in the background to actually damage your system, your files, your information in any way that it was designed to do. So now we have hackers and this is someone who discovers an exploit of a computer system and makes their way into that system. So an exploit or a vulnerability or a weakness is simply what the hacker uses to get into your system. Think, think of it like a house. If a house has doors and windows on there, right, there might be that one door that's not fitted really well. So the hacker is going to use that door to get into the system, to steal what they want, to make changes to what they want, to do whatever they want. We have different types of hackers, but this is not something you need to worry about for Unit 1 much. You simply need to know that some hackers are bad. They're, they're called black hat hackers, and they're the ones that actually steal your data. We have white hat hackers, and they're the ones that actually work with companies to try and find these weaknesses and then tell the company maybe how you could fix these weakness. If you're a good hacker or a white hat hacker, you're known as an ethical hacker. If you're a bad hacker, or a thief or um, a black hat hacker you're known as unethical hacker phishing phishing is a type of social engineering attack often used to steal users data including login credentials credit card numbers so on and so forth so think simply think of phishing as someone doing something to try and get your details so it might be a fake email it might be a fake website a fake text message but it's normally disguised to look real or it's normally disguised to be a very severe thing. I think the most recent one was the Royal Mail hacking, I'm sorry, phishing attack where they tried to um, send people emails and text messages saying, we are Royal Mail and we're going to hold your, your, your item until you pay this money on this website. Some people have gone on there, logged in to pay the money and their entire bank account has been emptied. So you have to be very careful. That's what phishing is generally. Last, we have accidental damage. I think that one's in the name. I don't think I need to describe this much. However, simply where someone or a group of people do something unintentional, so it was not done on purpose, it was not done out of spite or malice, and something's get, something gets damaged. This is normally happening um, in hardware and in software as well. So let's say you're around your keyboard, you're drinking some juice, and the juice spills into your keyboard. That was an accident. Even though we're told not to drink or eat around our computers, it's something people do because it's so convenient to work and maybe eat sometimes. So accidental damage. We need to look at the impact that this has on people. So we have identity fraud and bank fraud normally for people, so individuals. So identity fraud is where someone stole your personal details, your personal information. They pretend to be you to do nefarious things or bad things, open bank accounts, take loans out, take mobile contracts out. There's bank fraud as well where it's more or less the same thing, they gain access to your bank account to steal that money. And if you're a company, there could be loss of reputation, there could be loss of income, there could be um, quite a few things, but loss of reputation. If Imagine if you found out that Apple was hacked every single week 
and all your text messages that you have between your family, your friends, gets released to the public every week. All those silly images that's in the family WhatsApp group gets posted on Google every week. Then you're going to be like, whoa, okay, maybe it don't go with Apple next time. And Apple might then have loss of income because people won't be buying iPhones anymore. Pe people won't be using iCloud and the iServices anymore. So they would have loss of income as well. 